Hello and welcome to yet an, another lecture on control system. Myself, Koti Thoray, Assistant Professor of Dr. Shudhuk Chadrashu Degree Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. So we have learned the mathematical modeling of physical system, the mechanical system, followed by the nodal analysis, the force voltage and the force current analysis, then followed by the mathematical modeling of the rotational system. So today we'll discuss about the control system components. So today we'll discuss about synchro. So a synchro that is also known as auto sync means that is the self synchronizing or automatically synchronizing device which is an electromagnetic transducer so what does the transducer means transducer means transducer is a device that converts energy from one to another means from say mechanical from electrical or the energy can be converted from one form to the another form it is known as transducer so which produce an electrical signal in response to the angular displacement in synchron is a self-synchronizing or automatically synchronizing device that converts an electrical response when an angular displacement is offered and it is generally an electromagnetic transducer which is convert and mechan uh, uh, from us uh, one form to another that is the conversion of the energy will time so a synchro is basically consists of two sections. One is known as synchro transmitter and another is known as synchro receiver. So there are two parts of the synchro. One is known as transmitter and one is known as receiver. So let us concentrate on the synchro transmitter. So synchro transmitter that is convert the angular position of its rotors that is the mechanical input into an electrical output. So Synchro transmitter. So this is the general block diagram of a synchro transmitter. That is, this is synchro transmitter, which is generally the input is the mechanical input. There is the angular position, mechanical input, and which is converted into an electrical output. So electrical. Mechanical input and the electrical output. It is generally known as as a synchro. So means the synchro transmitter that is generally converts the angular position of its rotor, that is the mechanical input, to the electrical output. So let us discuss about the construction of synchro transmitter. Synchro transmitter is generally similar to an y-connected three-phase alternator so in case of the three-phase y-connected means the star connected three-phase alternator and it has a stator part and a rotor part so let us discuss about the stator part a stator part which is stationary the name suggests that the stator part is stationary and it is made up of laminated silicon steel and is slotted a winding of three phase balance supply which is a concentric coil type so what does the three phase balance supply means so we have to discuss that the three phase balance supply means first we have to discuss about the start connection then we will go for the this is generally known as Y connection or a star connection system. So phase means, first of all, the phase, that is, what does the phase mean? Phase means a sets of winding. So three phase means three sets of winding. So what does phase means? Phase means, phase means, Sets of windings. So 
is means sets of winding. So this is an one winding, two, three winding. So this means sets of winding. So three phase means three sets of winding. So we have to concentrate on say so these are the three phase. One is say R red, yellow, and blue or black. So there are two types of phase displacement is there. One is called the temporal phase displacement and one is called the spatial phase displacement. So temp spatial phase displacement means in space they are 120 degree apart from each other. In space they are 120 degree apart from each other. This is called the spatial phase displacement. And one is called the temporal phase displacement. This is the spatial phase displacement and one is called the temporal phase displacement. Temporal means in time domain. If a voltage is applied to this, this is called the neutral point. So the voltage at the R which is applied say Vm, say I am saying that it is Vm sine omega t. Vn sine omega t. So at say Vb, there is a phase displacement and also the time displacement. In displacement in time domain, that is called the temporal phase displacement, it is sine omega t plus 120 degree. Is the VY say VM sine omega t minus 120 degree? So, in time domain, they are separated by an angle 120 degree from each other, and in space, they are separated by an angle 120 degree. So, there are two types of displacement one is called a spatial. Phase displacement and one is about the temporal phase displacement. So all the magnitude are same, that is Vm. So it is mean the supply is balanced and the supply is provided on the stator part. So in order to produce a rotating magnetic field, we have to provide a balanced three phase supply. So phase means three sets of winding. So that is given in this is a stator winding. So stator part is a stationary part and where the three phase balance supply is provided and the rotor part is a general low lapse. This is the rotor part and the rotor part is a dumbbell bell shaped and it is a salient pole type wound with concentric coils. Through the slip rings and AC voltage is fed to the rotor. This is suggested for the slip rings. So double well dumbbell wound coil with concentric coil. So rotor is designed like that. The dumbbell shape rotor. Rotor is a rotating part of the system. So dumbbell shape rotor that is applied. And with the help of the slip ring the voltage that is applied to the, to the rotor. An AC voltage it is supplied to the rotor with the help of slip rings. This is known as slip rings. So this is a general construction as like the three phase alternators the single so this is the general construction of a stator and the rotor point now we are i'm 
coming to the principal operation of semiconductor. The synchrotransmitter is based on Faraday's law of induction and acts as a transformer with rotor as the primary side and stator as secondary side where the windings are displaced 120 degrees from each other. So it is acts as a Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. When an AC voltage is applied to the rotor of a synchrotransmitter, the following events are occurs. An alternating current produces an AC magnetic field. So in order to generate an magnetic field which is alternating in nature we have to provide a three phase balance supply that we have already known to the rotor part uh, or to the stator part uh, three phase balance supply which is generally produce a magnetic field between the air gap of the stator and the rotor so means if i draw this is called the stator part the stator part and this is for the rotor part if i draw the for the rotor part and this is for the stator part but in case of the stator part we are producing three phase balance supply in order to produce for the three phase balance supply say ryb phases and this is called the air gap this portion is known as air gap between the stator and the rotor for the air gap between the stator and the rotor which in stance this air gap is generally responsible for producing this is a hypothetical conception that this air gap is generally responsible for producing a rotating magnetic field like that so when the rotor starts rotating it will gradually cut the rotating magnetic field so there are, in order to view the rotating magnetic field uh, that is a magnetic field that is generally produced in the air gap that i have seen the if a Oh, if the now the rotor is started in rotating, it will gradually cut cut that magnetic field. So this magnetic field, and it will gradually this the magnetic fields that is there, and it will gradually cut those magnetic fields. So as a result, a voltage will be induced according to the Faraday's law. The voltage will be directly proportional to the rate of change in flux according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. E is directly proportional to d pi by dt. So this is called the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So according to that, a voltage will be in, induced, which in trans connected uh, allow a current to flow through the rotor. Means the rotors are short circuited at the end rings. So the rotors are short circuited at the end rings. Means the rotors are like that. They are short circuited at the end rings with the help of bars. So these bars is connected here. In this way, the rotors are short circuited. So another bar from here to here. Like this, the rotors are short circuited with the help of end rings. So as a result, uh, the uh, if they are short circuited, if a voltage is induced, there is a current will both flow through that end. The current will be allow the current to flow through that rotor circuit. Means there is a flux cutting which is produced and voltage. This voltage is allow the current to flow through the rotor as they are short circuited at the end parts. So, if the effective voltage induced in stator coil depends upon the cosine of the angular position, so it is totally dependent upon the cosine of the angular position, the amount of voltage that is generated. Of the coil's axis with respect to the rotor axis. When the maximum effective coil voltage is known as the effective voltage induced into a stator coil, then any angular displacement can be determined. Let us say we have applied voltages A sine omega t. So the induced voltage at the stator winding is Ps1 t equal to Ps sine omega t cos theta. 
Vs to be equal to K A sin omega t cos of and then do the derivative plus theta. Vs three t equal to K A sin omega t cos of that is minus one hundred twenty degree plus theta that is minus two forty degree plus theta. So the corresponding line voltages that is V of S one minus V of S two will be found with the help of just putting those values there and it will be cos A minus cos B equal to sin A sin B. Just putting those formulas which is obtained that is over three into K A sin omega t into sin 60 degree plus theta same in case of the v of l2 that is root over 3 into k a sin omega t uh, into sin 180 degree plus theta and v of l3 will be minus root over 3 k a sin omega t plus sin of 240 degree plus theta so we find that for an input of angular position, the rotor shaft is related to the stator winding. The Srinko transmitter gives a set of three line voltages, but Srinko stator winding gives an electrical output. There is a voltage. When the rotor starts rotating, it will produce the angular position will be determined by the cos theta, and when the rotor is start rotating, this is the mechanical input now converting into the electrical output where we are obtaining the three phase voltage. So another term is known as electrical zero. When theta equal to zero means there is no rotor displacement. So V S1 has the maximum value of the voltage that is K A sin omega T. From the equation two that we will obtain that it has a maximum value cos zero degree equal to one that is K A sin omega T. So the V L2 can be written as root over three K A sin omega T into sin 180 degree plus theta. The position at which the V S1 is maximum and V L2 is zero means the line voltage becomes zero the vl2 that will be become the zero and the v s1 that is the phase voltage the stator phase voltage at the first phase s1 s2 and s3 given when the phase voltage is at the first and second at the third phase this is the position is known as electrical zero or the reference position of the rotor in synchro transmission this is the general figure of Trans electrical zero of the single transmitter. Here is the general position of electrical zero of a single transmitter, where the Vs1 is maximum and VL2, that is the line voltage, is generally known as zero is generally known as electrical zero or the reference position of the rotor is known as means there is no phase displacement of the rotor, so the phase displacement will become the zero and the Vs2 becomes the zero. This is a three phase system. So now we will concentrate on the single receiver or control transformer. So when a stator winding, that is the output of a single transmitter, is coupled to a single control transformer, as shown in the figure, that is, when a single transmitter is connected with a single control transmitter transformer, the complete system is called the single error detector or simplified single. So when a synchro transmitter it is generally connected with a synchro control transformer, so this is generally known as error detector, synchro error detector, or simply synchro. So unlike the synchro transmitter, the receiver has an electrical input to its stator and a mechanical output from the rotor. So here it is the electrical input means the what we have seen in case of the synchro transmitter. There is a rotation of the rotor that is a mechanical input or a displacement, angular displacement that will produce an electrical output and the three phase voltage in three phase stator system. And when this stator is connected to an, uh, this output voltage is feedback to an transformer or control transformer, it is means that the receiver has an electrical input to stator and a mechanical output from the rotor. The single receiver function is con is to convert the electrical signal. It is found that the output from here is electrical signal and from the transmitter back to the mechanical angular position through the movement of his rotor. Synchro error detector compares the angular position of the two rotors. It is generally used to compare the angular position at the input that is fitted out from the uh, synchro transmitter that is an input is generally known as the uh, Electrical input and it is feedback to the receiver that is an 
control transformer, the intestine is the receiver, and this is the and which in transform but the rotation of the rotor of the control transformer. Control transformer, which is in which is trying to provide an feedback to the control transformer. Means the output electrical output from the simple transmitter is feedback to the control transformer and which is generally used to measure the mechanical position of the movements of the rotor. So how the working principle is over? This is the stator of both synchro transmitter and synchro control transformer are identical and the output signal from the transmitter transmitter is created as the output to the stator of the control transformer, the flux patterns are identical in both of the system. So in the, as this, means this three phase will be fed to the, this three, means the, this three phase of the synchro transmitter is fed to the three phase of the synchro receivers of the control transformer, means the flux that is generated by the synchro transmitter will be identical that is fed to the control transformer. The voltage will be induced in the rotor of the control transformer. Means it will allow the voltage to be induced. The induced voltage will be proportional to the cosine angle between the two rotors. So Et equal to Ka K1 into A sine omega T into cos psi. So it is the psi is the angular displacement between the rotors, and K1 is the proportionality constant. So it is given that the induced voltage will be proportional to the cosine of the angle between the two rotors. So when the displacement is equal to 90 degree, the Et will be zero. This is proportional, this is this position is generally known as electrical zero of the error detector. Okay, so this is known as electrical zero of the error detector. So let us consider phi one is the angular displacement of the rotor of the transmitter. So this is the angular displacement, so the phi one of the rotor of this simple transmitter. So and B is the angular displacement of the control transformer. So B is the angular displacement of the control transformer. So the net angular ET can be found as A one A into sine omega T cos of ninety degree plus theta. 90 degree plus theta minus b. So the net angular will be a sine omega t into cos of 90 degree plus theta minus b, where it will be equal to ka sine omega t nine, uh, sine b minus theta. So for b minus theta to be small, sine b minus theta will be tends to b minus theta. So the equation 8 and 9, we have et equal to ka sine omega t to b minus theta so it is given that beta minus theta so it is so, so sine beta minus if uh, beta minus theta equal to be small so sine beta minus theta will be tends to beta minus theta so the equation became uh, k1 a sine omega t into beta minus theta so it is directly proportional to the beta minus theta so it is seen that the synchro transmitter and the control transformer pair acts as an error anchor detector means that there is a so beta minus theta that I have already told that is the beta is the angular displacement of the control transformer and theta one is the angular displacement of the rotor transmitter. So they are measuring the difference between the beta minus theta one or the beta minus theta that we have seen that is the angular displacement beta is for the synchronous control transformer and for theta 1 or the theta for the synchro transmitter, so they are measuring the angular displacement between the control transformer and the rotor transmitter. So it is generally known as beta minus theta. So this is nearly an error detector. So the purpose of the error detector is to that compares the angular position between these two rotors, and the conception is that. The output from the synchro transmitter, that is the voltage output, is feed back to the synchro control transformer. So the input at the synchro control transformer is an electrical one, and output from the synchro control transformer is a mechanical one, which is the angular position of the movements of the rotor. We have to measure the angular displacement between the two rotors 
one for the uh, means for the angular displacement of the control transformer that is called the theta and the angular displacement of the synchro transformer that is called the theta one or the theta so the error detector that pt that is generally for output is proportional to the uh, theta minus theta minus theta so that's the uh, difference between the two angular displacement is measured by the synchro receiver or the control transformer So today we have learned about the synchro, the synchro transmitter, and also the synchro receivers. The concept of the synchro transmitter and the synchro receivers is that the, we have to find the error decoder conception also. So the error decoder, which is generally find the or the or minimize the error between the angular positions of synchro transmitter and also the synchro receivers. It is the error between the synchro transmitter and synchro receivers that we have seen that ET directly proportional to theta minus fit and also we have found that how and mechanical input that is the angular displacement of the rotor when a supply voltage is given will be fitted or will be transmitted to the electrical output with the help of synchro transmitter so the conception of synchro transmitter and synchro and it is receiver or the control transformer that we have already known today and it is found that the synchro is an Self synchronizing or automatically synchronizing device electromagnetic transducer that is produced the electrical signal in response to the angular displacement. So, we have also come to know about the three phase balance supply and how the when what is the phase phase is nothing but the sets of winding, where the three phase is three sets of winding, and also we also find the conception of. Uh, how a balance supply is generally responsible for producing the magnetic field and how an electromagnetic induction which is produced a uh, voltage there is a rate of change in flux and speed is very proportional to d5 by dt which is turn produce a current through the rotor circuit and uh, that allow a voltage to build up on the stator one stator circuit and how the angular displacement of the error can be minimized with the help of synchro transmitter and control transformer which is the pair which is act as an error detector. Error which is act as an error detector. Thank you.